Hi everybody, today I'm going to share with you a stock that I feel that is positioned for recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic and these stocks have not stopped paying dividends since 2003 even up to today. Is this stock? This stock is none other than Comfortdelgro. Okay, Comfortdelgro is one of the largest land transport company in the world. Okay, with a global workforce, and a lot of people always think that Comfortdelgro is talking about taxi. Actually, they are more than a taxi company. So this this is what they are now. They have a global footprint where you can see they have office. Uh, they have operation in UK, Ireland, Malaysia, Singapore. Australia, China, and Vietnam. So they have operations across seven countries in 67 locations where they have a global workforce of more than 20, 23,000 people. Okay. And this is their revenues, okay, based on their annual, latest annual report. You can see Singapore is still the main contributor to their revenue. We contribute about more than half of the revenue, followed by UK and Ireland and Australia. Okay. But Look at the contribution by segment. You can see that the public transport actually is the main contributor to Comfort Delgo re revenue, which is close to 80%. Whereas the taxi only contributes about 12.5%. Okay. So that's a common misunderstanding. A lot of people think of Comfort Delgo, they also relate it directly to oh, the Comfort Taxi. Actually, they are more than the taxi. And you can see the main revenue is come from the public transport services, okay, which is the bus and the real. Let's look at the past five years. Okay, the past five year revenue, you can see that the Singapore is constantly maintaining about more than 50% okay, contribution to revenue, followed by UK Ireland and we can see that the Australia revenue have been increasing in 2016 from 10% now to about 18% is the fastest increase okay, in revenue okay, contribution to the company as a whole. And let's look at by segment. Okay. Uh, the taxi contribution to the group have from have dropped from 25.3% in 2016 actually to by 50%. Okay, by one to only 12.5. And the public transport services is the main contributor okay, to the company that were happening. Of course, they got other services like the Automotive engineering inspection, testing, driving center, car rental, and bus station. But all this is only contribute to a small percentage to their bottom line. So the key focus on Comfort Delgro is still mainly on is still mainly on their public transport services and of course the taxi. And let's look at their profit. Big revenue contribution doesn't mean we'll have big profit. You can see there's a big profit drop, more than 50% drop in their profit due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And Singapore is the main contributor for the total profit. And you can see they are suffering losses in UK and Ireland okay, for FY 2020. And the rest of the profit actually have also greatly string. Okay. And let's look at by segment expect that taxi is suffering losses. Okay, we pull down their whole profit margin. Okay, the public transport still practically the full profit is mainly contributed by the public transport. Okay, that support the whole company to remain uh, profitable. But this is just on a world chart and we need to zoom in to see more detail to see actually where does this profit actually come from. Okay, this is their revenue okay, breakdown for, for 2020. You can see that actually the public transport services actually also lost, make losses of 1.9 million. Okay, but due to the government relief and support of 127 million and thus their public transport services able to stay afloat. Okay, stay afloat. Okay, so we can see that actually the COVID-19 actually has hit them very hard. Okay, if we are the government relief, the public transport services will also go into negative. Okay, and not to mention that the taxi services which is very badly affected. Okay, and despite there's a government relief, it still lost 64.4 million. Okay, so this is the current state of Comfort Delgo now. 
and we can see that they are badly hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. And let's look at their dividend history. Despite the COVID-19 pandemic okay, hit them badly, they are still able to pay some dividends. Okay, they are still very, pay. but this is a very big contrast of dividend they paid in the past. Okay, let's look at from year 2008 after the growth at the bottom of global financial crisis, crisis how much dividend have paid? They have paid about five cents. Okay, prior to that, every year there's some special dividend. I think they have scrapped the special dividend thing. Okay, and going forward, they only pay dividend twice a year. And we can see that since 2008, before, by until 2019, you can see that actually their dividend actually have been increasing year on year. Okay, and their degree dividend actually have increased by more close to 100%. Okay, after the global financial crisis and of course this COVID-19 come hit them badly and there, there's a drastic cut in dividend. Okay, there's a drastic cut in dividend as they are not really making money and thus we don't expect them to continue to pay high dividends. Okay, but the, the next question is you need to think of like COVID-19 over one day. Okay, when it go over, we're going to go to endemic. Okay, it become a way of life. So what happened if they were to recover? What will happen to the dividends? Okay. But this is just one, one picture of it. When you look at dividend, it look good. But we need to look go through and look at nothing and look at their earning per shares and their payout ratios. Okay, is the dividend really grow together with their earning per shares? Okay, let's look at a recent year. Recent year, of course, their earning per share have start from two thousand nine point six cent. Okay, grow to about twelve to fourteen cent. Okay, you have start to grow. But I look at the past few years. Okay, actually since 2013 to 2019, actually the earnings per share are not really growing. It's, to me, it's more or, less, more or less stagnant. Okay, it start to slow down. The growth start to slow down. Actually, at 2019, it start to drop. Okay, and but you look at the payout ratio. Actually, the payout ratio have increased as their dividend have been increasing. So you can, so let's look at the payout. Okay, let's look at their Pay ratio, you can see that the payout ratio actually have increased, okay, and and their dividend and followed by their dividend have increased. So actually, they are actually paying up more, okay, to increase the dividend indirectly, okay, as their EPS is almost stagnant, okay. However, they have a mandate that they will still pay at least fifty percent, okay, of their profit up as dividend whenever they make money. And task this year, uh, FY two two zero two zero. They have an EPS of two point eight five, so they pay off fifty percent to one point four three. Okay, so what does that mean? It means if company Delco do not make losses, they are still profitable. They will take 50, at least fifty percent of their earning to pay out as dividends. Okay, so this is a good thing for investors that are looking at dividend investing. Next, then look at the gearing and leverage of company Delco. Uh, despite the COVID pandemic, they have still uh, holding a lot of cash. Okay, so there is no worry about their cash flow issues. They are still having, and actually you can see actually their cash has increased, okay, by twenty five percent from two thousand uh, December one nine to December twenty. That means during this COVID nineteen period, their cash actually have increased by twenty five percent. Actually, which is a very healthy thing for a company to do and we can see a lot of companies actually they went into negative cash flow but for company Delco they are still pretty positive and they still have a lot of cash in the bank okay and another thing I want to highlight is look at their gross debt to over equity ratio is 18.2 percent okay this show that the company indirectly although they are asset company they got many uh, they got many asset they got 40,000 over transport vehicles with them okay but they are Gearing is considered very low due to a, a, for an asset heavy company, 18.2% actually is, is very pretty, pretty low. Okay. And thus, if they were to step up their gearing, okay, to go for expansion, actually is a good sign for the company to on the growth future due to their low gearing. Means they got more rooms, they can actually leverage or more to actually to grow the company. Okay, and now do they have any futures for company that will grow? Let's look at one thing. It's one of the growth potential is and in March this year, okay, our then transport minister actually had mentioned that they're going to review the downtown line financing framework. Okay. And why this is a good news to company that will grow, okay? As downtown line is operated by SPS Transit. 
and ComfortDelGo own more than 70% of SPS Transit. Indirectly, SPS Transit is a subsidiary of ComfortDelGo. Okay, so uh, the, the current framework for the downtown line is more on a fixed charge basis compared to the other line like the Northeast line, Southwest lines, Circle line, where are uh, based on a risk sharing basis. So they were able to perform better during a pandemic period. Okay, but for the downtown line, it's a fixed charge basis. That means whether got people take the train or don't take the train, uh, SPS Transit still need to pay the government a fixed charge. Okay, and we know that uh, during the pandemic, a lot of people work from home. Okay, buses are empty, trains are almost empty, and thus the train are op downtown line are operating at the losses and this actually indirectly affect the PL for SPS Transit. Okay. So if the government were to review this framework and migrate it to same as a profit sharing cap, okay, this will actually cushion the SPS Transit bottom line. Okay, that means that the volatility of the PL will be more stable. So thus is a good news for Comfort Delgo okay, on the long term. And next week, they have come up also announced that they're going to seek to unlock their value in Australia. Remember, I mentioned that Australia contribution to Comfort Delgo have been increasing year on year. Okay, and as of first quarter FY 2021, Australia actually have contributed close to 20% of the total revenue for Comfort Delgo as a whole. Okay, uh, just after UK and Ireland. Okay, but and also Australia was the highest contribution on the operating profit okay among all the overseas ventures that means they although their revenue is lesser than UK Ireland but their profit contribution is more than UK Ireland and and thus and it contribute 70.4 percent of that okay so we can see that Australia actually is a big contributor to comfort their growth bottom line and if they're going to unlock value in Australia actually that is also a good news and got good news for the shareholders okay going forward and um, but we don't know when they'll start to take action but this is something that they are in plan to go and do something which will indirect help the shareholders okay and let's look at the dividend so let's look at the dividend we know that comfort that will minimum pay 50 percent of their profits as dividend okay and due to this covid pandemic their earnings have drops drastically dropped actually they are able to make profit because of government subsidies okay so, and we know that this pandemic will soon end, their life will back to normal sooner or later, okay, and the revenue and the profit of Comfort Delgo will start to pick up, pick up, okay, so when they start to pick up means that earnings will increase, their earnings will increase, indirectly means what, your dividend will increase, okay, your dividend will increase, okay, let's do a simple analysis, you look at their dividend yield, okay, this is based on 31st of December closing, it's 0 0.9%, 0 0.9%, before the pandemic at 2019 is 4.11%. Also, that is also based on 31st of December closing price. Okay. Imagine that if their dividend were to increase, okay, what happened to the dividend yield? Will indirectly also increase. And when the dividend yield increase, what will happen to the share price? Okay. So this is a, a logic that you need to think through. Now uh, when you talk about is that is an opportunity for us, okay to look at stocks that are now being hit badly by the pandemic. And let's look at the share price. This is Comfort Delco had come down from the high of 290 before the pandemic. Actually, that is in September. After that, before the pandemic, it's around 240. And it hit a low of $1.32. And the current price is over around 160 to 170. Okay, so would there be a potential for Comfort Delco to recover back to before the pandemic price okay so this is something that you may want to take a closer look on this counter okay so do take note that uh, this is not a buy and sell recommendation okay please do your own due diligence okay and analyze it on your own okay so do if you found that this video is beneficial to you okay do remember to like and share this video also that do remember to subscribe and press the bell button so you're able to notify on my next video so i shall see you in my next video thank you